Hi, everybody. This is John here. This is Paul. George. And Ringo. And we're very happy to be on your program once again. Hello, everyone, and welcome to show number 72 of Beatle News Briefs, your home for all the news you need to know and the best talk from the Beatles world. I'm your host, Steve Marinucci. And we were going to do a regular show, but then the Beatles intervened. So what we're going to do is we're going to give you our thoughts on the new Abbey Road box set. Yes, indeed. Unfortunately, we can't play anything for you, but we're going to do a lot of talking about it. So let's start with some words from Giles Martin and Paul McCartney. Uh, Here's uh, some of what uh, Giles has to say in the introduction in the book that comes with the new versions. He writes, Once again, when I was asked to remix this album, it was there was a no better person to work with alongside than Sam O'Kell. Our job gets tougher as time goes on. I mean, Abbey Road sounds pretty great already. To get you as close to the majesty of the original recording as possible, we always strive to peel back the layers and be as pure as we can in our approach. The Beatles' work is amazing. We get older, but the music doesn't. There are no secrets about how the records sound as they do. The magic comes from the bands playing the instruments, the blend of the Beatles' voices, the beauty of the arrangements. Our quest is simply to ensure everything sounds as fresh and hits you as hard as the day it was recorded. In doing this, we are fortunate to work on Abbey Road in Abbey Road. We can recapture the sound of the orchestra in Studio One or the band in Studio Two. We can have the same ADT, that's artificial double tracking, that was used 50 years ago. We can even use any recording or mixing deck that the original team had at their fingertips. For the first time, we are producing a Dolby Atmos version of the album alongside a 5-1 surround mix. And that's contained, by the way, in the Blu-ray that comes in the deluxe edition. But whether in fully immersive audio or in stereo, this is still Abbey Road. It is not a record that sounds like the greatest band in history winding down. Far from it. And here's a little bit of uh, Paul's forward. It says, Having gone through some difficult days, we had decided to get back to where we once belonged to record again with George Martin, and this time agreed to the disciplines that had always been a part of recording with him. We all had plenty to contribute. We had decided to gather up our fragments of songs we hadn't quite finished and create a train of thoughts that could bring the album to a close. The Beatles' recording history had gone through many twists and turns, learning curves and thrilling rides. Here we were, still wondering at the magic of it all. And in the end, the love you make, well, you know the rest. Best, XXX, Paul McCartney. Paul, first of all, congratulations on another super LP from the Beatles. I personally like it better than the last one that we did, the double album, yeah. So I like the songs a bit better. I think it's more of an LP. It's very good. What were your own favourite numbers? Which were you particularly satisfied yourself on on this LP? Which ones stand out? Well, I like um, Come Together. That's a great one, which is John's one. I like Something, George writes. I think it's, uh, for me, I think it's the best he's written. Uh, And I like Because on the second side. Let me um, say a few words in general is before I get into detail on the songs about the mix. Uh, Maybe it's no surprise, but the 2019 mix is punchier. And actually, in some spots, it almost has a 3D element to it from the flatter 2009 mix and the original 1987 CD mix. The songs... Some of the songs really jump out of the speaker. It's 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 very nice. Um, here, it, I'm I'm not going to run through the original album track by tech, track, but here's some of the highlights from the new mix uh, on "Oh Darling," which you heard on YouTube. You've got the uh, backing vocals now more prominent. That ooh chorus. Um, that you can hear so clearly now is it will really bring you a smile if you haven't heard it yet. You will when you get the CD. On Octopus's Garden, the guitars are brightened and the vocals are kicked up, and the undersea vocals at the end sound a lot more prominent. They're put way pushed way up in the mix. 
so you hear this ooh, quite clearly. Um, and because the uh, you you um, I mean you heard uh, what uh, they did with it for love uh, with the acapella and and all that. Uh, it's not that radical, but you can hear the synthesizer a lot more clearly now than you could before. Here comes the sun. There's another real big highlight. Um, something different here. Um, right after the guitar, the synthesizer that was barely audible in the 2009 mix is much more up front. You, again, you can hear it very, very clearly. It it almost sounds like an outtake. It, it sounds so different. Um, on Polythene Pam, the backing vocals and the rhythm guitar are more prominent. On the end, the drums and instruments are pumped up as you would hope they would be. So there's no added um, lengths or nothing, you know, uh, nothing um, taken from an unreleased portion of the song that was added in, at least not that I detected. Uh, everything that was used or everything you hear comes from the original album. So they didn't stray very far in it. And it kind of goes with what Giles said in the beginning um, where they were being pure in their approach and that's exactly what they did. Uh, John, when you got the LP together, did you just select from uh, like a large number of tracks or did you virtually have a... You know, no, the, not from a large number of tracks. Uh, from a large number of songs, you see. Each of us have got, you know maybe about like 10 songs to contribute to an album you can't get them all on so when it's your turn to record as it were mm. you've got to sort of pick the one you want on most really let me run through the notes I made on the outtakes um, some of these things are, are pretty amazing um, I want you she, she's so heavy the trident recording session and reduction mix begins with a little conversation between John and George Martin, where John says, what is it the case of Mr. Martin? And George Martin goes, take four was very good after the breakdown. John says, which was take four? And George Martin says, and it was very good up to the end there. And then there's apparently a part that was cut out, and John says, my boys are ready to go. And a, and a voice comes in and says, John, and John goes, what? And John says, is it possible without affecting yourselves too much to turn it down a little? Apparently there's been a complaint. And John says, from who? And the, the voice says, somebody outside the building. And John says, what are they doing there at this time of night? Apparently there was a complaint about the, about the noise from the recording session, which is hilarious. Um, the outtake itself has dominant organ all the way through from Billy Preston which is really nice. Um, the goodbye demo is the one that's been out all year, uh, all, you know, forever on bootleg. Um, but for those who haven't heard it, it's Paul singing the Mary Hopkins song. The something demo, this has also been out, though not as clear as before. And this one is on YouTube. A Ballad of John and Yoko, take seven, begins with John speaking in German and then Paul saying, okay, George, which is a bit sarcastic since he and only John were at the recording session. It's a bare-bones version of the single, and John at the end says, yeah, we'll have it, we have it. Uh, Old Brown Shoe begins with a George count-in. Uh, it's an early run-through with George stumbling on a line and with some piano noodling at the end. Uh, uh, George says at the after the song is over, okay. Oh, Darling, Take Four. This is also on YouTube. It's an early, very loose version with Paul still getting a feel for the song. When Paul sings, I'll never make it alone, you hear John shout yes in the background. He puts a lot of uh, emotion into the uh, song and later fools around with it a little bit, too. Octopus's Garden, Take Nine. Ringo goes uh, starts uh, saying, uh, well, that was superb. George does the opening riff a little bit different than the record, and Ringo chuckles as the song begins. There's more guitar in, in this outtake than in the finished song. Ringo also makes a change in the lyrics, and then he says, Did I go wrong? This morning we're going to discuss 
and analyze, and call it what you will, the brand new Beetle LP called Abbey Road. Now, at the same time as receiving all the praises and acknowledgement that is going on in the music world, the Beatles are often put under the magnifying glass for criticism. Often there's talk of Beatles not progressing anymore and that Sgt. Pepper was the pinnacle of your musical achievement. Let's hear it from a Beatle now. Is Sgt. Pepper the bullseye in Beatle music? Or is it, in your own mind, Abbey Road, a progression from Sgt. Pepper? Uh, they're all a progression. Every, you know, every new album is a progression. I don't, you know, people can say it's like a step back when we, when we don't get as complicated as Sgt. Pepper. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think that, you know, I think since um, Sgt. Pepper we've tried to get more together as a group, so it's a progression for us to do records like this, uh -huh. more than have, you know, a million piece orchestra that sounds groovy and we're just like the backing group. Right. It's only you four on the selfie, is it? You're yeah, using... mainly Billy Preston and odd pieces of orchestra, that's all. You know, the orchestra isn't featured that much. You never give your, me your money, take 36. According to Mark Lewis, and this was the, the, the last take recorded on May 6th, 1969, Paul rambles as the song begins to the point of imitating Artie Johnson's Dirty Old Man from Laugh-In, because he mentions a walnetto, he says something like, Oh, do you have a walnetto? It's really kind of funny, actually. Um, he gets more expressive in the vocal here than he did in the finished take. Her Majesty, take one, two, three. This is on both the deluxe set and in the two CD anniversary version. Take one is the extended version with the extra chord that's been bootlegged forever. Take two is a different extended version with Paul's voice breaking a little bit. Um, Golden Slumbers take one to three. The song breaks down in the middle as Paul is singing Boy, and then it starts again. Uh, Here Comes the Sun, take nine. It's, a, it's an early bare-bones version of the song with Paul and Ringo backing George. The simplicity along with George's vocals really sounds beautiful. What's really cool here is the acoustic middle eight, which you hear before sun, 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 here it comes. It's repeated several more times than it is on the record. It's really tremendous. Uh, side two, Here Comes the Sun, is the other song that I wrote on the album. And uh, it was written on a nice sunny day this um, early summer in Eric Clapton's garden <laughs> because uh, we'd been through really hell with business and you know it's very heavy and on that day I just felt as though I was sagging off like from school it was like that I just didn't come in one day <laughs> and just the release of being in the sun and the, it was just really nice day and that I just that song just came it, it's a bit like if I needed someone and you know like that basic sort of the riff going through is the same as uh, you know all those bells of Rimney sort of bird type thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's how I see it anyway. Mm -hmm. But quite a um, simple tune. Uh, Maxwell Silverhammer, take twelve. This is an interesting moment. Paul instructs Ringo at the beginning of the song not to do, not to go, quote, do more sort of pity, pity, boom, because it sounds a bit dead when you hear it. And in the middle of the song, Paul begins crooning which is kind of weird, and then improvising. Later in the song, he starts a little bit of scat singing. So he really kind of goes off on a tangent here. Come Together, Take Five. This one's on YouTube. John fooling around a little bit with the words. By the way, this song was originally commissioned by Timothy Leary for his gubernatorial campaign in California against Ronald Reagan. Um, on the end, Take Three, uh, Paul says, okay, let's hit it as the song begins. There's no vocals here, though. It's just Ringo's solo, which is basically the same as the release version. So what you're basically, what you're hearing here is an instrumental, but with a little different ending. Next is uh, the demo of Come and Get It, which has been bootlegged forever. Um, but this one says, uh, this one has Paul saying red light uh, and take one. Uh, by an an engine by an engineer. The red light is uh, Paul, by the way. Um, and then Paul later says, "Okay, give it to us on headphones, and I'll track it." Uh, Sun King, take twenty. 
John says, now this won't keep the Apple staff in work for the next 10 years. We've all got families to look after, you know, a lot of people to keep. Okay, fab gear. The version, the version here is basically instrumental with John singing a very low volume guide vocal that's barely audible. The song goes right into Mean Mr. Mustard, take 20, where John sings casually saying God saved the Queen a couple of times. Another John line is, his sister Burnus works in the furnace. If that doesn't sound like typical John. Uh, uh, pa uh, Polythene Pam, take 27. Paul says to George, if you don't do so much to start off with, as you start off, you blow it because you blow it all. Um, interesting that he's telling, saying that to George at the beginning. Uh, he says, you give away all your best bets. Um. Uh, Part of what George replies can't be heard, although I, I hear Ringo's name mentioned. And then Paul says, what are you doing at the beginning? Then George's guitar is heard with Ringo's drumming from the song. Paul says, okay. You sa and then John jumps in with, you sound like Dave Clark of the Dave Clark Five. The song is still a work in progress, but it's close to being done in that outtake. She came in through the bathroom room window, take 27. It's another work in progress. Paul makes an, a lyric change instead of, and got myself a steady job. He said, and got myself a proper job. The next song is, is a take one of Because, which is completely instrumental, although Ringo counts in. You could, But you can hear the lush instrumentation of the song. Um, and at the end, Ringo says, nice harpsichord, Jeff, even though... It apparently was played by George Martin. Next is the long one, the infamous 15-minute, almost-finished alternate version of the Abbey Road medley. The difference here is that um, right before Polythene Pam, uh, Paul sings Her Majesty, and it was later decided first to take this, that out completely and not use it, and then the engineer showed it to Paul the next day, and Paul said uh, he would use it after all, and they used and they stick it, suck it where they did, 20 seconds after the end of the album. Um, the version of Golden Slumbers that's heard in this medley is the one that you've heard on bootleg, but it's without the tape drag. Uh, Carry That Way, it sounds almost like a pub sing with uh, Ringo and John's voices. Um, overdubbed a lot it, it's it's quite interesting and then the instrumental lead up to the drum solo is missing the oh yeah and there are no vocals after the drum solo something take 39 with the strings is one track that was premiered on youtube uh recently and that is absolutely beautiful if you haven't heard it you really should hear it um and then we come to the final track, or the final outtake, I should say. Golden Slumbers Carry That Way, take 17. Again, an instrumental, but this has strings and brass only. The description says it all. There's no vocals here, and it's a very lush instrumental. That's it. I, I got to say, the, the, the outtakes are, are very nice. And, of course, the quality is excellent. So... Um, I mean, overall, this is this is a, a tremendous piece of work. The album itself was great to begin with, and it's nice to have these additions. The big question is, will we get more when the Let It Be project comes out next year? Can we expect a Let It Be box set? Um, will they do others? Good question. Anyway, one piece of real new... Uh, New, up to date news or recent news is that James Corden's uh, Carpool Karaoke with Paul McCartney special won an Emmy for Outstanding Variety Special in the awards announced this past week. Some of the headlines online were kind of funny. Um, one of them said Beyonce snubbed. Well, no, she wasn't. Um, the special was actually nominated for five Emmys Outstanding Directing for a Variety Special. Outstanding Picture Editing for Variety Programming, Outstanding Variety Special, which is is the category it won in, Outstanding 
and outstanding sound mixing and outstanding writing for a variety special. The audio mixer, by the way, was David Kahn, who you know produced Driving Rain. And this is not new news, it's just something we thought we would mention. We happen to run across it online. Uh, but uh, if you've been looking for a copy of John C. Wynn's Lifting Latches, it's available as an ebook after being out of print for 20 years. Uh, you can get it at www.multiplusbooks.com and tell John we sent you. Anyway, that's it for now. You can catch our shows on fab4radio.com, beatlesarama.com, and also on YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, iHeartRadio, or wherever you get your podcasts. Please join our Beatles News and Information Group on Facebook for the latest in the Beatles world and check out our That's What I Want Beatles Store page for gift ideas for yourself or your favorite folks and where you can find links for contributing editor Candy Leonard's Beatleness book and my Meet a Monkey Davy Jones book. And let me just put in a little plug for our That's What I Want Beatles Store page to say if you have not ordered the Abbey Road box set, you can find a link for it there. And look for our next show and tell your friends to please subscribe and we hope you will too if you don't already. We will be looking for you. Till next time, this is Steve Marinucci saying... Be seeing you. that one market fab